Hi, my name is Kevin. Welcome to my channel. Today, I'm going to do this video being myself as Kevin. I'm not going to do it in drag because I've done several videos of RuPaul's Drag Race and they all get copyrighted. I'm not sure if this video is going to get like copyright too. And I don't want to go through all the trouble of putting makeup on and doing my wig and all of that because it takes like several hours and it's just too much work if I'm not going to be able to keep this video. For the people who are here just to see drag, like I understand that but I also want to make videos being myself and just see how they do and like see how my channel like evolves throughout time and I also want to like thank you guys for being so patient because I haven't made content in so long but I just been going through a lot yeah I'm sorry for that this video is going to be a uh, RuPaul's Drag Race season one recap and we're going to just watch the whole season or I'm going to try to recap it like within less than an hour yeah we're gonna watch this whole season together and I'm gonna give my opinions about the looks and about what happens throughout and we're gonna see all the drama and everything that goes on in season one so before we get started I also want to mention that I had to edit and like take out a lot of sounds and like change um, scenes so I actually never seen uh, RuPaul's Drag Race season one until a few days ago because I started with season two it was almost like watching a whole different show like the whole dynamic was different and the whole way they edited it um, it's not so jumpy it's more natural I took the liberty to make it uh, or edit it in the way that they would edit a season now so that's why like when you see the untucks that I'm gonna show you it's like very jumpy because that's how they like um, edit the videos now but before it was very raw very like a conversation that just flows instead of a lot of cuts and jump and yeah but in my video I did edit it like how RuPaul's Drag Race is now but so it's called the lost season because it's almost like an entire different show a whole different dynamic it does follow some of the same characteristics that the show has now but it's a little bit different so because that was more like a pilot and it was a uh, film in a basement in Burbank California in the video when you guys see the untuck you guys are going to also notice that it's in a really small hallway and it's green um and a lot of people think it's a room but it was actually filmed in a hallway it was just really wide enough for them to put couches and cameras they use a room closet for their control room because their budget was really low so they have very low budget the price was low I think it was 20k at the time so and that's why it was also filmed in a basement because they just didn't have a budget and it was more of a pilot and they were trying to pitch it to a network and Logo ended up taking it the first season only had nine contestants and and also season one did not have snatch game and and they had this horrible filter that um, it was like um, blurry and shiny and it was mostly to hide RuPaul's wrinkle and actually it was not called the lost season by fans it was actually called the lost season by Logo because when Logo aired it for the first time after years of not um, being on air because um, when you would watch Logo like back then they would promote season 2 and 3 a lot and they wouldn't promote season 1 as much which to me season 1 was pretty good so but they wouldn't promote it but eventually they did and when they did they named it RuPaul's Drag Race season one the last season reveal and that's why it got the name uh the last but also the reason why they decided to call it the last season was because they just wouldn't air it nobody would ever be able to find it because even in their when you would pay the subscription for logo they didn't have it in their website they only had season two and three and I'm assuming it was because they thought that season one wasn't up to their standards but like I said to me it was a pretty good season I like that it was so raw and so unedited even though mine is super edited but the reason why I had to do this video like this is because I'm trying to figure out how to not copyright so that's why mine is pretty crazy and pretty all over the place but it took me a lot of hours to edit this video and to get all the footage so I hope you guys enjoy it so the judges for season one were RuPaul, Santino Rice, and Marilee Gingsberg the original network was Logo it was not in Paramount or VH1 or any place like that the only place you could find it was in Logo As, uh, Logo is a network that would make uh, reality TV that was uh, queer related or 
uh, TV shows that were queer related or movies and I actually enjoyed the network I don't know what happened to it but it was a pretty good network I do think that it needed to be more um, culturized like it needed more black people more Latinos more Asian people it was very white the network was extremely white maybe I should make a video about Lolo like I don't know let me know in the comments the theme song for the runway every single episode was cover girl by RuPaul RuPaul's Drag Race the last season was aired on March 23rd 2009 it wasn't aired again up until 2013 in Logo and that's when they named it the last season. so without further ado the last season RuPaul's Drag Race season one cover girl so the first one to walk in the room was Chanel and she was the diva of the season I personally don't like her look because her hair seems like elegant and she has like big earrings like and I understand that at the time like drag queens would like wear big earrings and like extravagant like that but it just doesn't work with the outfit because she's wearing a see-through shirt that is like skanky with some like ghetto pants that are ripped through the side and they just don't go with her hair her hair seems like it's more for like a gown than it is for that look like with that I would have done like a ponytail like a high ponytail and maybe like smaller earrings because that just doesn't go together and I actually wouldn't wear that outfit I would like burn up the second one to walk into the workroom is Nina Flowers and I actually do like her look her hair is like a piece of art it's so beautiful and her makeup is very old school drag which is very characteristic of her and she does this like thing with her drag where it's like androgynous and it's really beautiful because if you can tell she puts a lot of effort in it and her orange outfit is so cute and I love her earrings they're like small and sparkly they're so cute so so I'm really loving Nina's entrance look the third one in their workroom is Rebecca Glasscock which her name is kind of like I don't know I don't like that it's really ugly and her outfit is very pedestrian and I remember at the time girls would dress like that with like jeans and like the crop top like blouse so it's very like if she didn't put effort at all like she wanted to look like an actual woman but fine if you just want to look fishy but like pedestrian that's not elegant or elevating and you're walking into their showroom with a bunch of drag queens that are gonna read you to fill so the fourth person to walk in is angina and actually this look of angina I really like it it's very like elegant and chic and honestly in my opinion I think it's the best look that she had throughout the season that's not a good thing because like yeah you want to show your drag and show how good you are but if your entrance look is your best look you already lost after angina comes pork chop Victoria Parker and she has this look where it's very like church lady so I don't know like it's also very pedestrian it's almost like if she was going to church and she was like in her 50s not really a fan of her look like I feel like if you're invited to this kind of show you should have elevated it and she kind of stayed pedestrian just like Rebecca we have Akasha Akasha was another look that I didn't like and I'm not like Michelle Visage that doesn't like green but this look is just ugly trashy and it just doesn't like look good on her it makes her look trashy and ugly and it just doesn't complement her body which she's like a drag queen that loves to work her like show her body because she like works out and wants to show it which is great but this specific outfit just didn't do anything for her and it just made her look ugly we have the infamous Miss Tammy Brown I love this look of her she looks different she looks she doesn't have any eyebrows and if you see Tammy as a boy and then see this look it's like a completely transformation and Tammy Brown is a theater queen she loves to like be dramatic and express herself and you guys are gonna see that throughout the season but this look specifically just brings out Tammy's personality so I really like this look on her and I think it's like one of my favorites of her also the next one is Jade and Jade's look is also very basic and very pedestrian and I have a feeling like her and Rebecca were really good buddies from Puerto Rico and they decided you know what what? let's go shop together and they went to the same Ross to buy their outfit and the last one is Bibi Sahara Vene which her and Miss Porchop probably went to church together and decided to come right after to participate because her look is very church lady also it looks like she got she just came from church and very pedestrian very fishy but not who what a drag queen should or it's very it's just a very basic look that they just brought like they just probably like 
like were like you know what let me just throw that in just to walk in that. or maybe they told them that the challenge was that they were gonna get wet and that's why they decided not to put on their best outfit hopefully it was that after they all come in they all like have a little kiki like always and like get to know each other before rupaul comes in and tells them about the mini challenge what's, what's going up? on well this show <laughs> crazy huh popcorn and cracker jack okay chanel on the mirror being a total diva she's going to be like the diva of the season the one who's shady and like brings all the drama okay so before we continue let's ask some of the contestants what they would be if they wouldn't have gotten on rupaul's drag race. girl i would be a stripper or a slut and pregnant with a whole bunch of children oh, okay akasha what did you think of chanel when you first saw her when i saw chanel i was like oh another skank with her butt hanging out well since you're bringing up her butt, what do you think of her butt? Hers is a little flabby. The next clip you guys are going to see, technically, it's Untucked. But the way Untucked was filmed back then, it wasn't called Untucked. It was called backstage footage. This was uh, the hallway that they would wait in um, before they would either, while they were being judged by the judges, or when they would wait for a mini challenge. For example, the mini challenge this week was the sexy car wash photo shoot, and they were waiting in this hallway before they went to the shoot because as you guys can see here they are dry um the photo shoot obviously they get wet untucked in season one was more of a backstage footage so that's why you're going to see it a little bit different or not with their outfits from the runway another thing is uh all the untucked or back footage clips that they had was all filmed in this green hallway also in this next clip you're going to see uh bb uh, have a conversation with uh, pork chop about why she thinks that it's okay to call people fat and my opinion it's not okay to call people anything they don't feel comfortable being called you have a friendship with someone and that's the type of friendship that you have where you guys call each other those type of names that's between you two but when it comes to her opinion about oh we should make it okay to be called fat because it's the same thing as being called skinny i don't think so i feel like it's within whatever the person is telling you if they don't feel comfortable being called fat then don't call them fat at all i don't think that's a term of endearment or anything i think that it's fat it's a compliment i think when somebody calls somebody else fat is because they're trying to hurt their feelings or like be spiteful yes i know i've done it i know i've called people that like when i'm mad or when i want to fight with them or whatever um so i personally don't think it's a compliment also pork chop is trying to explain to her that that's not something that um it's a compliment or that she would be want to be called so let's watch it i think when you're a big person you you just have to realize who you are and you have to strut what you've got and mm -hmm. be happy with who you are honestly with me i would tell somebody you're fat well why would you have an issue if somebody tells you you're fat and you wouldn't have an issue if somebody tells you you're fat? It's because we put so much pressure on those words. That's true. But, but you need to but size. you also need to understand that not all fat girls have that same attitude. Well, that's too. A, that, and so what's mm. happening is that this the media is always portraying that as a negative. I'm not a drag queen. That oh I forgot I'm you a woman. woman. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So we have the mini challenge, the sexy car wash photo shoot, and like you guys can see it's super classy. Okay, and um we got the shot. <laughs> All right. Woo. That was fabulous. Then RuPaul tells the ladies what the main challenge is going to be. And the main challenge is making an outfit out of a three strip store clothes. So they have to like choose um, the material that they're going to use. And they have to like recreate it into an outfit. And that will be the theme of the runway. And like you guys are going to see, RuPaul comes in and he has a little interaction with Tammy that gets a little cuckoo. Would you like some tortillas? Keeps your tortillas nice and warm. Are you going to use the tortillas on your outfit too? Yes, ma'am. I was going to take them back to my room, put some cheese in there and iron them. And now we move on to the runway. And we have RuPaul walking in with her beautiful black gown and she looks sickening. And although her makeup like doesn't look that cute, I'm assuming like that's why they put that filter. And we got Akasha with her look. I like her look. Her look really does complement her body and it looks cute. Vivi's look looks very African and like the way she transformed that material was super cute 
though and it looks very elegant on her and it looks really pretty i really liked her look next we have jade and her look is very amazonic it's very artistic i really like it it would be great for a lip sync and a dance it's super cute and the way it flows is just beautiful like that runway was so beautiful i also like nina's look nina's look is very like i say androgynous where but that mohawk and that makeup and the details on the shoulders looks really cute i'm not a fan of the pants but it still looks cute i don't like angina i think rupaul is right when she said that she still looks like a boy in this outfit it kind of looks like she wraps some fabric around and just put two strings it looks horrible next we got rebecca glasscock i kind of like her look it looks kind of futuristic but at the same time i don't like it because it looks cheap and kind of ugly in a way chanel and her look is really pretty it's a bathing suit but it's really cute and it complements her body and we have tammy brown tammy brown looks so cute very vintage she likes the vintage look so this goes perfectly with what her drag is like and it's pretty cute and the last one which is like my least favorite is pork chop her look looks really ugly it looks like she has salami on her chest it's just ugly in this next clip rupaul is going to tell angina that she looks like a boy which she does like honestly she should have like added like i understand some people don't want to use a wig but i don't know she should have gotten more creative with it or at least tried a wig or something but it just the look was just too ugly i still see a little boy i would love to see more of a little lady <laughs> In the next clip, um, they tell Portia that she looks like a double stuffed Oreo, which is like messed up and racist. Like she literally has two black men standing to the side of her and she's the white cream, which I can't believe that air. Pork chop looked like a football field. So, um, well, I was kind of having a good time. <laughs> it looks like a double stuffed Oreo. The guest judges for this runways were Bob Maki and Mike Reese. Mike Reese was the uh, photographer, the one who did the car wash photo shoot. Bob Maki is a designer. Bob Maki was getting very disrespectful. Like that old man was very bold. Just un unflattering. Really? Okay. And just like that, Akasha and Pork Chop end up in the bottom lip singing to a RuPaul song called Supermodel, You Better Work, Akasha takes the win. Cover girl, put the bass in your walk. Head to toe, let your whole body talk. Now what? So Akasha takes the win and we say goodbye to Pork Chop. The challenge winner for the first episode is Nina Flowers, so congratulations, I really loved her look. What I'm gonna show you next is going to be the Untucked of the episode, the actual Untucked. Like I said, it's called backstage footage. In this Untucked, we see how Chanel just like, like really has a lot of opinions about everybody. You know what makes Nina, she may not be the thinnest girl or the most beautiful girl out there. Victoria is here. Is it her look? is so yes. intense but she has a lot of incredible talent in doing what she does so that i can improve that why i will say and when she walked in yesterday she was in that yellow off the shoulder tight Real top the oh. jeans and the heels the silver heels she was very like you know painted lightly with you know i want to know okay in this next clip um you guys are going to see tammy brown go off and complain about how rupaul ignores them and the rumor is that rupaul um only talks to the contestants when they're either filming and the cameras are on because supposedly she doesn't want to have favoritism or show favoritism so she doesn't interact with the queens um while they're not filming just to have like a fair competition but also i think it's bs I think it's just rude and like you guys can see the contestants complain about it and don't like it and for them to show it on the video just truly shows how RuPaul just doesn't care about their opinion or their feelings because it's basically like rubbing it in their face we're fans we are a fan she's, she's in out I'm out of here well you know what <laughs> we're here to talk to you we read your books we watch your tv shows we buy your albums we have good. a first place for wigs right? we buy lace for that is what we're here for pieces, honey. we could just ask her say Listen, sister, we you know what's going on because we're big fans of yours and we're here to represent. So Pork Chop, before you leave, we want to ask you uh, if we did a rounding up of votes and voted who should bite her, who do you think should win? I hope Nina Flowers wins. I think she's got a lot of potential and hopefully she'll take it somewhere where it needs to go. She'd be a great representative for the community. So go Nina. 
So now we move on to episode two. And in episode two, it's called Girl Group Challenge. So this is the Girl Group Challenge where Michelle from Destiny's Child shows up as a guest judge. We also have Frank Gutstone. The mini challenge is called Act Out Certain Emotions. And it's basically like a little photo selfie photo shoot where they have to do different facial expression. The two winners of the mini challenge are Akasha and Onjaina. And then they have to like somehow wrestle for the paper but it was more of a joke of an Akasha because she was being a bitch. And you know Anjaina is like four feet. In the next clip we're going to see the conflict that Tammy has with her group and how they kind of have issues like getting along and just like with their ideas and like cooperating and just being well as a group. And you gonna go see Tammy just be a mess and just declaring that Akasha is Beyonce. I'm with the black girls. <laughs> yeah. I really did not want Tammy. The reason I was chosen last is because Akasha fully didn't feel comfortable with me, and I think people don't know how to understand my character. Well, you can make costumes, right? Necklace, right? Whatever. You know what? I like your style. I think we should do one skirt. And you don't have to actually sew them. You take them like you this and knot them together. I'm not acting frustrated. If y'all would just listen to what I have to say, yeah. then it'd be easier for me. But you're telling me what to do. You're directing me, God. and I can't, you know? I am the leader of the group. I get the final say. I'm like, Tammy, the cape's out. Akasha is the Beyonce. Akasha's not only like being tough with Tammy, she's obviously throughout the episode just like being like a tough leader with all of them. Which to me, in my opinion, it doesn't go nor here nor there because you know when you're the leader, like the responsibility falls completely on you and if something goes wrong, you can end up in the bottom. I think that it was a good idea that she like took like a hold of the challenge and like she was a strong leader. But clearly the other girls are not having it, so. She's trying to play the bitch role. And that bitch is me and I'm happy with that. Tammy will have some trouble adapting to different styles. I, I should be more there. sexy. Shut the fuck up. So RuPaul walks into the workroom to see how the girls are doing with the challenge and how they're like getting everything together and she has a little interaction with Tammy Brown just you know having their little moment because usually with RuPaul's Drag Race they give a lot of like airtime to either the winner of the episode and whoever is going home. So that's why Tammy it, this is like a lot of airtime that she's getting because today she She's gonna be going home. Miss Tammy Brown is making a gown. Well, I'm a little worker girl. I'm kind of behind the scenes cooking and cleaning and taking care of the house. So are you in charge of the costumes? Yes, Miss RuPaul, I am. This one's mine. So it's very short, isn't it? And I keep sewing. Yeah, okay. I can get jiggy and wiggy too. People don't know that. I'm scared of you. Sexy, exotic, get your freak on, get down, do the booty scooty. After that, RuPaul brings in Michelle from the Town. She gets to meet the girls and the girls get to meet her, a legend. I love it. Michelle, can you handle this? No. So the next clip is going to show how it's very fragile, how you can go easily from leader to dictator. And Akasha literally like just is not having it with this girl. It's going to be her way or the highway. I need some liquor. Uh, Miss Thing, what do you I need? think Mr. Akasha, you have to start working, honey. We don't have that much time, honey. Technically right now, we're all supposed to be doing our makeup, right? We don't need this pressure. I think I might just take my authority in this one. And just uh -uh. Girl, it's a group. And you cannot take your authority. Team lead doesn't mean you take your authority to decide what we want to be called. Yes, it is. We're called the golden holes. <laughs> Thank you. I'm coming, my little African cherry. <laughs> No. <laughs> I'm just a different person from everybody else, and I'm on planet nine, they're on planet three. We're doing independent woman, you guys are doing say my name. Awkward! I see. Poor Tammy with her struggle dancing. <laughs> Woman independent, put your hands up on me. So the judges for this is Michelle Williams, Frank Gatson, giving a show, and that's why we don't see, or I couldn't find clips of the runway. Michelle Williams is clearly not having it. They like totally butchered that choreography. Tommy Brown looked horrendous, and she just went in on Akasha, and Akasha was just giving her all the attitude that she could. And I mean, just disrespecting her, and and Michelle like did like kind of like just like was not having it with her, and.
and just gave her the attitude right back and michelle really like came to like judge the girls like she was not playing with them they she probably thought that it was a joke and that they needed to take it more professionally and that's probably what got her all like riled up how much time do i have lead singer gotta be able to to do it all and fall back into the choreography and since the choreography was so simple you guys are making it seem like i was horrible with the choreography and i know i brought it akasha mommy i love you if i don't make it home tonight <laughs> <laughs> Do I have security? <laughs> Brian Gatson also was not having it with them. Like, honestly, it was so disrespectful. And, like, the way that they were dancing, it, it almost came off as if they were just joking and, like, not taking them serious. Like, Michelle probably felt like, damn, if Beyonce was here, like, you wouldn't be dancing like that. Or you would take it more seriously. Like, the disrespect. Tammy, when you're doing someone's choreography, this is totally not your world. You're a piece of work, definitely. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Don't give me the impression that you're making fun of it. Kind of remind me of Don Robinson and In Vogue, an asshole like that. <laughs> um. So the two in the bottom is Akasha and Tammy Brown. Obviously, they went hard on them. The song for the lip sync was We Break the Dawn by Michelle Williams. And the winner of that lip sync was Akasha, taking her second win and becoming the lip sync assassin of the season. Also, we say goodbye to Miss Tammy Brown for the remainder of the season, which she left some iconic moments and really made her mark in RuPaul's Drag Race history. You know it. These aren't the kind of songs I like to do, I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, I did what I did. Buenas noches. Bye, Tammy. Bye, Tammy. Oh, see you later in the magazines. <laughs> Cover girl, put that bass in your walk. Head to toe, let your whole body talk. And so now we're going to move on to the Untucked Up episode two and in this next episode nina uh, flowers is going to be talking about how she had trouble learning the lip syncs because they only gave them half a day to uh, learn it it was fair in the sense that they all got half a day to to learn the song so let's watch it. i've never it's done a ridiculous like i did today on stage <laughs> in my life i had never in my life had trouble lip syncing songs but of course i've never learned them in a half a day right. and we already know that Mr. Santino. He likes to hear himself talk, as far as I'm concerned. Just talk, 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 talk. That was really hard. Yeah. But he didn't even win. Mm -hmm. Actually, you put that in there. But he didn't win, and he's judging us. It's an and when reaction. you get critiqued, you take it very offensively. They don't see you backstage. So whatever you represent yourself on stage mm -hmm. is what they're going to see you and judge you as. But girl, she was overdoing, mommy, I love you. That, like, you know, trying to make it as if you were going to do something for her. Girl. That was ridiculous. It was not necessary. Was That's true. All you were saying is that learn. I used to be in your position, so you should learn the choreography or whatever. I know, I've studied my drag queens. I know who they all are. I really know this stuff. With you, two you eyelashes really and powder on its face. <laughs> I'm a professional makeup artist, so right. no, you are not going to read me for that. And this makeup is flawless. Oh you have an ant on your face, bitch. <laughs> Let's go and talk to Miss Tammy Brown. I want to ask you if there's a way I can do an interview later on. Let's just do the interview right now. Oh, okay, right now works too. I just want to know what is it that you're going to miss the most of RuPaul's Drag Race. I won't miss a whole lot, to be honest with you. Oh, okay. That works too. Thank you. Okay, now let's go to episode three. I want you to channel your inner Oprah. So episode three is the Oprah episode, but it's not really called the Oprah episode. It's called Queens of All Media. And, and the guest judges for this um, episode is Howard Breadman and Deborah Wilson. And the main challenge is channeling Oprah in three phases of her career. Uh, first, a mock interview, then uh, ad where they're selling product. And then finally, they will interview two people, which, which is Tori Spelling and her husband. Oprah for me is God. This is an African-American woman, and I am a light-skinned Puerto Rican. How am I supposed to be a black woman right now? Hey, foxy lady. My name is Goni Chong. <laughs> Stop. You better work, bitch. <laughs> I don't think anyone's going to have an interview as good as mine. <laughs> I'd kill for those abs. Tell me about your HIV. Uh, H. You have HIV? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Hit TV show. I'm sorry. Yeah. 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 
Like, okay, you know what? Let's move on. So like I said, again, we are back to the green hallway and this is basically the untucked of the episode also because um, it's the backstage of after when they interviewed Tori Spelling and her husband. Here's the untucked. The, the car oh, said about the, the hit TV. Okay. Look, I say HIV. <laughs> <laughs> It wasn't so bad. How's Tori's HIV? <laughs> First goes Akasha with her beautiful brown dress. It looks so cute. Then we have baby Sahara Benet with like this black cape, which looks so beautiful. And then she does her reveal, which it's like a bodysuit. And it looks so beautiful with the leather print and the big wig, almost like a lioness. Super beautiful. Now, this look of Jada, I didn't like. It looks really ugly. It does make her look like, a, like too square. I think it needed to be like the panties higher up it's a cute look overall it was just the way she was wearing it it was just not flattering nina with her runways always like killed it this wig looks amazing she looks beautiful feminine fish the outfit looks gorgeous and it's really one of my favorites out of all the season then we have angina here like she's not wearing a wig but like she's giving us more fish more femme and honestly i think that she would like benefit from using a wig because um i feel like it would like feminize her a lot more next we have rebecca cock rebecca glasscock and she has this like cute green light like picnic dress that looks so beautiful but elegant and then this iconic dress from chanel with her hair full of spiders like the greek goddess and just her boobs and everything she just looks so beautiful and dark and just giving us something different and really showing us that she's vulnerable the two lip singing are Akasha and Chanel and they're lip singing to a song called The Greatest Love Is All by Whitney Houston and the winner is Chanel saying goodbye to Akasha. And like that we say goodbye to Akasha. Cover girl, put that Akasha, we wanna know if you have any last words for before we say goodbye to you. I had so much fun and I'm so happy to be here. And I'm so happy for the other girls. Oh oh my god, are you crying? <laughs> I have not cried and I haven't cried in such a long time. So now we move on to episode four and episode four is called Macbeth Glam Challenge. It starts with the girls like having a little conversation about why Rebecca is not opening up as much. I want to see more Rebecca. I feel like I'm not seeing the Rebecca I think I see. Because the other girls won't shut up. Who do you think you are? Okay. What does that even mean? <laughs> if you thought you were as beautiful as being beautiful. You're gonna get the chance to do one another. You're gonna do each other's makeup. <laughs> so the mini challenge is giving partner a look within 30 minutes. So they had 30 minutes to uh, do each other's makeup. The teams were Rebecca Glasscock, Bibi Sahara Benet, and Jade and Nina, and Angina and Chanel. So three groups. It's kind of scary. Rebecca Glasscock. Yes. <laughs> it's not something that I would try. Wow, okay. Your face for the world to see. Wow, okay. <laughs> I've never seen myself with two sets of eyebrows, so that's kind of different. <laughs> In this episode, we see a lot of shade going back and forth with Rebecca and Bibi. It's, 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 it's not how I would do my face. If you had to do it. But I don't want to do a photo shoot. I don't think you want to do it with that nose either. Don't put words in my mouth, girl. You're the one complaining, not me. Thank you. Thank you. And Rebecca was like, you know what? You want to see some personality? Let me show you bitches some personality. I should have won. I should have won this challenge. I deserved to win this challenge. So the main challenge is Mac Viva Glam commercial. And in this commercial, they have to open up about something where like, what makes them a diva and what makes them prevail. And this is episode focused on Angina and her HIV status and yeah, so let's watch it. So Rebecca leaves the photo shoot because um, she's experiencing a lot of emotions because she's reminiscing about one of her friends who has uh, HIV and she's just like having a meltdown over it. Which comes off in the video as insincere since um, there's no tears and there's no re real emotion coming out. It's almost as like a robot. like putting up a facade. I started thinking of my best friend who, you know, ha has, you know, AIDS, HIV. <laughs> but 
like, let's not take my words for it. Let's go to the Antak and see what Didi Sahara Vene has to say about Rebecca leaving the photo shoot. She is either putting a front just so that she doesn't really show the real Rebecca out there, or she's trying to play the games to make it to the top. I won't say 100% that's what's happening, but I never go wrong with my instincts. I really like this way of Untuck, like how they're showing the backstage footage of after the photo shoots or after like any challenge, because this way we get to like, like really see what they're thinking throughout the process of the competition, as opposed to crumble up drama in 30 minutes, which is why I think Untuck doesn't work now, because they're trying to have them issue out their problems within a 20 or 30 minute uh, span of time when this untuck comes out more natural because they're having conflict throughout the competition and they're showing it as opposed to like uh, fabricating this drama at this specific time in untuck like so i think i like this backstage footage better and we start the runway with angina with her I, I, this look is very basic with me and for me it's like, like if she almost was going to a funeral and it just didn't look cute it just looked like a puffy a boy wearing a puffy dress and they keep coming for her looking like a boy but she ends up winning this challenge actually and Bibi Sahara Vene looking cute I love she looks so elegant her like costume is like like another bodysuit but like she like rocks those bodysuits then we have Jade coming in Jade looks so cute she looks like a gypsy she looks like um she's about to read your fortune the look is really cute Nina with this look again like really impressed her makeup looks amazing the wig looks incredible and the outfit looks like almost like a piece of art i really love this and we see that angina wins the challenge and she opens up about her hiv status and how it had affected her and it's really inspiring i really love this moment and it's like very real and natural unlike rebecca's which was a little bit robotic and it seemed fabricated angina you're the winner of this challenge <laughs> i was diagnosed with hiv on april 13 2006 it has been a really tough road for me for the past two and a half years. Hopefully this will inspire people to know it is still worth living even if you have HIV. And she gives us this iconic moment where she tells us that life is worth celebrating and we just have to keep on going. You have to celebrate life. You keep going. And I keep going. Johnny, you're an inspiration. Thank you. And for the lip sync, we have Jade and Rebecca going at it. In this lip sync, Jade gets eliminated because she gets too... She touches Rebecca too much. And there's this rule in their contract where they can't um, touch each other during their lip sync. And although some contestants have gotten away with it, like Alaska, didn't allow it here for Rebecca. So she, I mean, for Jade. So Jade had to be eliminated regardless of if she did better in the lip sync because I actually did like Jade's performance better. She had to be eliminated because she just like broke the rules and like really cross the boundaries of respect. Jade is the eliminated queen of this episode. Also, uh, fun fact, Jade gives us the first split of, C of RuPaul's Drag Race. Girl, put that- So now we move on to the uh, Untucked of episode four. And this Untucked is probably my favorite one out of all the season because it's the one that gets the most catty and the one where like you can really feel the tension and the drama and just really how much this queen's really want to win so how are you being yourself i'm asking you a question in high heels in a gorgeous outfit giving them body giving them glamour if i watch what you're wearing no because what are you going to do okay, me, you, have, speak? I just you have four right people now. came in here yesterday talking about how horrible you did and the way they edited made you look totally perfect and it was just too distracting so you know what i can't win with them me being here is serving me no purpose because nothing I'm doing they like. So calm down, calm down, honey. Listen. No, that makes no, no. sense. Because when they're just judging what we're wearing. Because this is a game and we're all players and we're all trying to figure out how to play. And that's all it really is. Take the energy 
take the bad energy and make it What's positive. The there is but a this... point, Rebecca. There is a point to our this person said this, this person said that. Is that re is that how I really feel about it? You take what you want to take. You have to sit and look within yourself and say, okay, two judges are telling you one thing, another two judges telling you another thing. The only solution to this is being yourself. Hello. What are you going to do? Now we move on to episode five, and episode five is Drag School of Charm. So for this episode, they have to. It's basically the um the makeover challenge, and they have to make over like this group of fighters who have a woman fighter who honestly look butcher than me like there's one of them that like literally looks like a boy they have to make them up into drag and like feminize this woman and yeah so let's see how they do make over your girl fighter partner into a real life female version of yourself my name is sweepy and i'm a cage fighter my name is mia I'm boxer. <laughs> My God, what are they about to put us through? <laughs> All right. Then I hope I don't throw up. Feel it, and then just ooh, just walk it. Oh. Hey. Good. Oh, Good I know. clothes. Yeah. Oh no. Damn. My dogs is barking. So in this episode, the one having the most trouble with her girl is Rebecca Glasscock. And she's the one who gets like the most screen time. But it's not because she's going to get eliminated. It's because she's going to be the winner of this episode. So that's why she's getting so much airtime. Drum roll. And look at her now. I thought they were the best. Yeah, I, I agree. Thank you. I was... Devastated. BB, Angina, you're in the bottom two. The bottom two is BB Sahara Benet and Angina, and they lip sync to Stronger by Britney Spears, making the first time a Britney Spears song is lip sync in RuPaul's Drag Race. BB taking the win and eliminating Angina. Another fun fact about this episode is that RuPaul gets up and she like goes and has an argument with the producers because she does not want any of them to be eliminated but because they didn't have the budget for more episodes or to keep it going they didn't do a double shanté they had to tell angina to sashay away because clearly bb killed that lip sync and there was no other option other than just eliminating her so now we move on to the untucked of episode five where the girls just like speak about today's episode and how they felt about the female fighters and everything so let's watch the untucked look at they were busier than us yeah okay. my girl was a man <laughs> and i didn't see anything in my girl with me at all until i was able to really get in there and literally re-sculpt her i mean because let's face it physically out of makeup and costume, there's nothing Chanel there. Nothing. Yeah, but she looks like it. Nothing. But when she was done. That's exactly what the challenge mm -hmm. was. Yeah. Words that you have for us? Still a size zero bit. So we're finally in episode six, and the girls are sick of Rebecca. They want her out, and let's see how she fucking deals. With I don't know if any of the other girls are angry that I'm still here. None of the girls like me. Rebecca has been able to mislead everybody. I know the fake person that lies underneath all that cosmetic. No one likes Rebecca, but she is able to stir the pot and to create some drama. That's why she's here. But I'm not bitter about that. That's okay. Rebecca, Miss Citron. So what do you have planned? How are you gonna blow me away creatively? Uh, that's a secret. Oh, ancient <laughs> Chinese secret, huh? Yeah. Uh-uh. Uh, that's the secret, isn't it? <laughs> Bottom line is she has no fucking clue what she was making. So the name for episode six is Absolute Drag Ball and the mini challenge is them bogeying or doing a ball. And the winner of the mini challenge is, the winner is Nina Flowers just dropping it out and giving it her all. The winner is Nina. I want to see some popping, some dipping, and some spinning. That's right, bring it to the ball. And Rebecca, oh. Vogue <laughs> it out, is swimwear. Surf's executive realness. Think CEO diva. I want to be gagging on the extravaganza and eleganza of evening wear. I am a showgirl from Las Vegas. I'm not one to wear simple things and to do simple things. I don't even know why I should bother going on when I just don't seem to be successful. 
Opulence, you own everything! So now we start with the runway and Didi Sahara Rene with her three looks. We first have the bikini, which every single one of them had a specific color. I don't know if like they gave them a color like specifically to represent, but each one of them, their looks came like almost like if the cohesiveness was about color. Who should be eliminated tonight? So when they're in front of the judges, RuPaul asked the infamous question, who should go home tonight? And why? Do we just get to pick one? <laughs> Give me one name. Out of the three, I would say Chanel. She's a little annoying. Rebecca. I would say Rebecca. Rebecca is at a lower level. Chanel, myself. Because I don't want to be here anymore. Week after week, I am so negatively critiqued. It's true. And I, I, I'm sorry. I, 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 Miss Raspberry Benet. <laughs> I think this Chanel thought that she was gonna have a little moment of like rebellion and they were going to love it and live it for it and be great TV. But it kind of playing her against her because I feel like RuPaul was felt disrespected and called out and she felt like, you know what, if you want to leave, then just go ahead and go. Also, Rebecca just brought it up onto herself for the shade that she was throwing and like all of the girls just were not feeling it. Like, so they just came right for it. And just like that, we say goodbye to Chanel. Rebecca. Shantae, you stay. Thank you, Chanel. And sachet away. You're beautiful, Chanel! So now, Chanel, we want to ask you, do you have any parting words? I already won. Cover girl, put... Now we move on to Untucked of this episode, and we're going to see how the girls interact and what they, how they feel about the challenge and all of that. The challenge last week. Sorry, but... I should have won it. I should have won it. Shock. Clear I noticed shoes. that you wear the same shoes with the three <laughs> outfits. Is that the only one you have? <laughs> Girl, he like, look at he let you have it. He said, yeah. yeah. Work, look at you read me. So now we move on to the last episode of the season. Episode eight. So finally it comes the grand finale and our three last contestants standing come to the workroom for the last time. And there's no mini challenge for this episode. This last episode is infamous for having uh, the girls record part of a song and performing it with RuPaul. This is a tradition that has been going on ever since the first season. The main challenge is for them to write and record their verses or I don't know if they write it themselves but they have to record their verses for this song and perform it and film it for RuPaul and this song in question is Cover Girl. This is it. This is the big moment. Hello, Hello people. Girls. Hello. Mm. You ready to do it? And as you guys can see the choreographer like really works them out. Feels, 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 feels. When it needs to be perfect it should be perfect. Bam. It has to be a little bit dirtier. Work the camera. Live here. Don't hold back. From the top. Ha! 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 Bam! I love this sensuous side of you. Also, since season one, they have this like sit down with RuPaul where RuPaul pretends to care about what they've been through and their problems. And yeah, so let's. Hello, Nina! The... Come around here, darling. Ma. 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 Oh! I went ahead and ordered without you. <laughs> it, it, it's very hot. <laughs> to Cameroon. To Cameroon. So, after they have this sit down with RuPaul, they have to record their verses. The person they're recording this verses is with Caswell. He's a gay rapper. He has several songs on YouTube. You guys can look him up. Okay, you have four bars of nothing. This man, I'm scared of you. So they finally filmed their video with RuPaul and it comes out pretty cute. Like you guys can also look up the video. Like they, I'm sure it's posted somewhere. And the one having the most trouble with this is Rebecca, especially with her wig sliding back and it just doesn't look cute. RuPaul's last look looked really cute. I really love it. Her dress looked like, it's probably one of the best dresses she's ever worn. Like the red and the puffiness just looks extremely really cute. Beauty, 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 beauty. That just crimped, primped, and pimped. Pumped, crumped, and plump. Well, this is it. In finale of RuPaul's Drag Race, best woman wins! So they bring up Rebecca, they don't even give her a chance to lip sync or anything. I feel like that's like one part of the show that I don't like. I feel like they should allow them to lip sync for one last time and then get eliminated. And then 
but in this case they just didn't like her performance she was the bottom so she's the eliminated queen and this look is kind of like basic also for a grand finale it's just like a barbie that will make uh nina flowers and bb sahara benet our top two of the season and the ones lip singing for the crown how are you doing so i'm not having a good hair day so you know what whatever the girls have come for you yes i think maybe it's just because they're a little bit older sorry suck on that bitches but it's not your time yet you are not the next drag superstar <gasps> i think maybe it's just because they're a little bit older uh, i'm only 26 but before we move on to the last lip sync we're going to or i'm going to show the last on tuck because i feel like like i like putting the backstage footage just how they go and this was probably filmed before this was filmed while they were waiting for to see who were the top two queens lip singing so yeah let's watch the last on tuck of the season give me a kiss I think that you have a wonderful personality your attitude is being completely different from the girl that I got to talk to the very first day. Okay, and you're gonna be 30 very soon, bitch, okay? <laughs> you are so freaking talented. You're so elegant. How do you say bitch in, 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 in cameras? Uh, Abo loco. Abo loco. Abo loco. <laughs> 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 yeah. Help you kickstart whatever you wanna do. Like, I wanna, I wanna study somebody. charity in Cameroon. <laughs> So now we're ready for the two um, top queens to lip sync for the crown and it's Vivi Sahara Benet and Nina Flowers lip singing to Cover Girl by RuPaul and and we're about to see how Vivi is chosen as the winner so let's watch it. The winner is Vivi. Congratulations baby! <laughs> Thank you so much for this wonderful experience. And we also say goodbye to Nina Flowers, beautiful queen. She gave us really good looks in the wrong way. So we also love you, queen, a Latina goddess. And we're done. Our winner is Vivi Sahara Benet, our reigning queen for season one. Nobody can take that away from you. So congratulations, queen. We love you. I just want to say thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, thank you all so much. Cover girl, put that bass in your walk. Head to toe, head you, let your whole body talk. Now what? Now what? All right, that's right. And we have the reunion when we have like cat fights, we have hugs, we have butt grabs and everything. So let's watch a little bit of the reunion. This is just a crazy like smashed up clip. So it's not like chronological or anything. It's just like a little bit of the most important parts of the reunion. And it really was more like me editing things like crazy and not exactly how they go. So I just took the liberty to like just edit it in a way where it was like kind of crazy and all over the place. To finalize this crazy recap, cap and this crazy smash of videos of season one i'm going to leave you with this reunion smash down that i did of video clips and just like like the funnest parts and i just did a little like crazy because i know if i did it how it's supposed to be it could get copyright so i just had to like edit this video crazy that's why it looks all over the place. but i'll leave you with the last parts like the end uh collage of reunion clip moments so just enjoy and that's all for me have a good night and bye. Oh, and if you like this uh, season one crazy recap, um, let me know down in the comments if you want me to continue with season two, three, and so on. And I hope you guys really enjoy it. Like it down below if you like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you. We've reunited and it feels so good. I believe that your don't stick. I hate the way that you act. You and she the was the missing link. How you went behind me, grab my tits, grab my snap. Your grandmother has seen the show. My grandma was like, oh, you could really work in some stilettos. And I'm walking across the street with my butt hanging out. It was the best conversation I've ever had with my mom. Just like, you're stupid. I second that motion. I love you, mom. <laughs> you gave me such horrible critiques. When I walked down the runway, I shaved my ass probably every other day. As an entertainer, 
The top is cheap. I think the pants are wrong. $550 pants? You paid too much. Your headpiece popped off. Was that intentional? In all honesty, you made me feel like absolute you forgot that you were amazing. If you take on someone else's negativity, it's because, God damn it, you forgot it. Because you're goddamn stars. How many times do we have to Don't put that in your head? You star. Do we equal to you? You have to own it. Own it. You own it. You own it. You both call me losers. I don't like being called a slut. I'm a lady. You look under my skirt, and it'll stick you in the eye, though. You, you forgot, forgot you're what? fabulous. Don't blame me for that. That's your responsibility. Use your mouth. Because why? I'm mother. Please. That's how I feel. And I don't see you out there walking children in nature. <laughs>